In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the background color in Photoshop. Hey everyone, this is Jordan from SleekLens.com and in this video I'm going to take this image and I'm actually going to replace the background color which is currently white. I'm going to replace it with a totally different color and show you how to make it look more realistic and also give you the ability to change colors without having to do a whole bunch of different steps. So the first thing we need to do in this video is actually cut this person out and this is going to be a relatively easy cutout because the background is predominantly white. So uh, if you have a very complex background, I'm going to leave a link to a video in the description that will show you how to cut out more complex subjects uh, in that, that particular instance it's hair but the same settings and the same type of process works in uh, in pretty much every situation so again we need to cut out this person uh, and get her removed from the background and since this uh, setting is kind of pretty easy because it's white I'm gonna choose the magic wand tool here and all I'm gonna do is just kind of click uh, around the image and uh, I get a pretty good neutral selection there. It's, it's kind of mixing in a little bit with the hair as you can see. If we were to zoom in, uh, it's kind of got a little bit of stray hair there. Um, but for the most part, it's done a very good job of selecting the, uh, the person around here. I got to get in between here. I can click the shift key and as you can see, my cursor changes to a little magic wand with a plus and that will allow me to click uh, and add more selections around the image. So now that I have my selection, I actually need to inverse my selection because I selected the white background and pretty much anything I do from now on is only going to affect the white background. So I actually want to cut out the person, so I need to inverse my selection. So I'm going to go to Select, Inverse. And nothing's going to really visibly change, uh, but now the selection is actually selecting the person instead of the background. Now I can go into the Select and Mask button right at the top here, and as you can see, it automatically cuts out uh, the person here. And if you're not familiar with the Select and Mask dialog box, it's fairly simple. Uh, you can select a different view here, so we can go to a, what's called an onion skin, where it just kind of cuts out and it's completely transparent back here. You can do the marching ants as we were doing before. You can do an overlay, and all this is really doing is helping you see the parts that you cut out. And I'm just going to leave it on black because that seems to work well since the background was normally white. We can see all the black fringing that we have, especially in the hair, and that's what we're going to remove right now. So the tool we're going to use to kind of get rid of this fringing is called the Refine Edge Brush Tool here. And I'm going to click on that. And all I'm going to do is kind of draw around my subject and get rid of this like white cast, this white fringing. And the way you do that is just kind of get a fairly small brush. Uh, you don't want it too large. And you're going to start from the inside of the subject around here. So I'm going to start right here. And I'm going to start painting around the edge. And as you can see, as I'm doing that, it's starting to get rid of a little bit of that white fringing. Uh, it's not doing a, a perfect job right now, but we're going to take care of that in just a second. So all I'm really doing is just going around my subject just like this and trying to get rid of that fringing as much as possible. So just like that. And I'm going to take care of a little bit of this, uh, see if it does a good job. It does fairly, fairly decent. Uh, but again, I'm just going lightly over my subject and trying to get rid of mu as much of that cast as possible. Now you can see the difference that it made right here where it's, it's kind of sharp black, uh, bl really dark contrast here. You still got a little bit of that white here. So I'm just going to go in there and quickly go around my subject. So there we go. I have, re I have removed a little bit of the uh, the white casting here, especially around the legs and the hair, uh, and it looks really well. Uh, but you can see here, if we zoom into the shoulder area, uh, right here is a little spot where it kind of took away a little bit too much. It took away actually part of the, the person here, and we're going to add that back in just a second. Did it around this area, around this area here. And so it's, we do require a little bit of touch-up that we need to do. Uh, but as you can see, we have most of it cut out, and we, we've done a pretty good job with that. So one thing we need to pay attention to before we click OK down here is the output settings. We have it set on selection. Now what I like to do is actually click on selection and choose new layer with layer mask. And what that's going to do is apply those, those settings where we remove the background. It's going to apply that to a layer mask so that way we can actually easily paint this back in uh, to, to correct these little areas. So I'm going to click new layer with layer mask and hit OK. So there we go. Now as you can see, you can clearly see that it's kind of it's lightly transparent here. And what we need to do is actually get a brush. So I'm going to get a regular brush. I'm going to make sure my hardness is roughly around 
30, 35, somewhere around there. Uh, and I'm going to get a light brush here and I'm going to choose a white brush and I'm just going to paint back in. As you can see, it's painting back in. So this will help get rid of that problem area that we kind of uh, were, were doing with the, the uh, refined edge brush tool. So I'm just going quickly around here to try to get rid of some of these transparent areas and, and bring back the subject. Uh, just kind of going around here looking for little areas and if we apply the uh, background and we see more problem areas that's the beauty of layer mask is we're able to go back in and change those at any point so again just looking for problem areas here all right just like that that will do for now all right so just like that that will do for now and it looks pretty good that's a pretty decent cutout so now I'm actually going to apply the color to the background. And so what I'm gonna do is create a, a background layer in between the two original here. I'm gonna create a brand new layer, it's a blank layer, and I'm gonna go to Edit, Fill, and I'm gonna choose white as my content. So I'm gonna click OK there, and now we're kinda of back to where we started. White background uh, looks like the original photo. But now we can actually create a hue saturation layer. So I'm gonna go down to the adjustment layer here and I'm gonna click hue saturation and that's going to apply it to uh, that image right below us. So now we can actually click colorize and now we can apply different colors to our background layer and it's only affecting that background layer right there. So now we can choose any color we want to. So I'm actually gonna roughly match the color of the shirt here. So I'm gonna go right around there. And as you can see, we still have a little bit of that white fringing and we can take care of that with that layer mask. So I can have a, a, a pure, purely blended in uh, subject. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and choose probably this color right here and I can play with the saturation, uh, play with the lightness here, make it dark as well. Uh, I can just kind of play around with the color I like, but I'm gonna stick with this one. And I'm gonna minimize that and I'm gonna go back to my layer mask. I'm gonna get a brush and I'm gonna make sure my brush is black and I'm just gonna paint away some of that white there. And all we're doing is just kind of manually, manually correcting some of this here just to kind of take away some of that white fringing. Uh, even though it was a very simple background, it's really hard with the magic wand tool or mostly any selection to get a, a perfect cutout the first time. You kind of need to go back in there and play with it. And so now we can look for any other problem areas here and uh, that's pretty good. We can actually get rid of the uh, the white that was in between the hair because this is from the original layer. We can go back in there with a black brush, kind of paint that away as well. Uh, we could have done this in the selection, uh, refine selection edge box, but we just kind of can do it here as well. So you got you got a lot more options to play with. So that'll do for now. I'll get, I'll get rid of that one in just a second, but that'll do for now. One last thing we need to do here is actually add, add a vignette to this uh, this image. Kind of makes it look like it's a little uh, backlight situation because it looks a little flat now. So I'm gonna create another layer right here on top of the hue saturation layer, a blank layer, and I'm gonna get a brush as well. And I'm gonna make sure my brush is a white brush and I'm gonna get a fairly large brush and I'm just increasing the size of my brush with the left and right bracket key, mainly the right bracket key to make it a larger brush. Uh, and I'm gonna choose my hardness. I'm gonna make sure my hardness is down to zero. And I'm gonna click right in the center of the image, just one click. And as you can see, it adds a really white hot spot. And now we're able to take the opacity down. We can do it that way. And you can see it starts to create a natural vignette around the image, or we can take the opacity up and maybe do an overlay and see how that kind of changes the color there. I actually prefer uh, the, um, the opacity option that can get a little bit more control over that. And there you go, it kind of creates a little hot spot. You can create another one up towards the, the head and towards the legs, the torso area, and that just creates a natural vignette. And you can again, play with the opacity to get which, uh, which kind of strength you like. So now if we have to change the color of the background, let's say we want to kind of do a complementary color, maybe do a little blue or something like that. If we don't want to stick with this color, it's as easy as just clicking on the hue saturation layer here and just messing with the hues. And now you can see we still have that vignette. We still have the hues that we can play with, the saturation, uh, just like this. We can play with the darkness. And as you can see, all we're doing is just messing with this one layer to kind of get the uh, desired color that we like. So I'm gonna continue playing around with this, maybe do a little bit of light blue, darken it up a little bit, and there we go. So again, we were able to change the background color very easily and also change the background color anytime we want to just by clicking on that one layer. 
Uh, and again, we can take the uh, the vignetting up. We can create a little bit more of a hot spot back there, uh, and it just makes it really, really easy to change the background color uh, just with one easy step. All right, guys, thank you for joining me in this video. Make sure you click the link in the description down below if you want to learn how to cut out more complex subjects, and make sure to head over to sleeklens.com for more photography tutorials, uh, editing, blogs, all that fun stuff. Uh, this has been Jordan from Sleeklens, and I'll see you in the next video.